think we're just about to start program before we get started. Has everybody eaten yet? How's the food? John, did you eat yet? How about you, Elvin? We have two late comers, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> anyway, I would like to take some time to thank each and every one of you all for being with us tonight. I know every one of you realize how important this is to the Arab community as a whole, not only to the Arab community, but also to the San Antonio community, because I believe and I feel in my heart that we're as much a part of this community as anything else. I left Tunis, Tunisia about 14 years ago, and San Antonio is my second home, practically. My children were born and raised here. I've been working here for the last 14 years, and so have a lot of other Arabs here. So we are as much part of San Antonio as anybody else. We're as much of Americans as anybody else can be. Before we get started, I would like to introduce to you the uh, American and uh, Arab American and Thai Discrimination Committee members here in San Antonio. And uh, board members, please, as I call your names, would you please step out here so you can be recognized? And I would like for your spouses to be with you also. And uh, I would start with Mrs. Barbara and Mr. Darwish. Would you please step out? Mrs. Jeanette Romaki and Mr. Romaki, please. Nusayba and Salah. Nusayba, would you please? Hussein Omar. Hussein, would you please? Who else do we have here? Who are we missing? We are missing Judy, our secretary. She's not here tonight. She's put a lot of work on behalf of ABC. Ladies and gentlemen, without these people, this banquet would not have happened. Janet, take your place and be recognized, please. Mohammed? Okay, Mohammed's back is hurting, so excuse him. These are the board members of the ABC Committee in San Antonio. They have put out a lot of work throughout this year. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you on behalf of ABC and for your hard work. Keep it up. Thank you very much. There is a lot of other people that are behind the scenes and they work very hard. And I would like to recognize some of them too. Amen. Would you please stand up and be recognized? <laughs> Abu Ali, would you please stand up and be recognized? <laughs> Abu Najib, I love you. Please stand up and be recognized. Hada Sheikhna, di San Antonio. He is so full of love, he radiates love, he shines. Thank you. Well, we have with us tonight uh, a few dignitaries. Some of them are not here. Uh, I would like for you to recognize Mrs. Helen Butler and Mr. Butler. Colonel Mohammed Nasser from Saudi Arabia. Major Yusuf Al Janahi from Kuwait. George from WOAI Radio. Mr. Byron Trot, Paragon TV. There is another man, ladies 
ladies and gentlemen, I would like to recognize, I left him to the end, that does not mean he's the end. About four weeks ago, I was talking to Abu Ali and I was suggesting who can help us sell tickets or do something. Well, I happened to stumble on a person by the name of Mr. George Haddad. I went to his office, I went to his office, and I introduced myself as the coordinator of the ADC chapter here in San Antonio, and I told him I needed help. This man did not hesitate one second. I could just see in his eyes, what do you need? I'm here for that. He reached in his drawers, and he took out letters that he has been writing to his congressmen, his senators, he even wrote to the president, and he also wrote to Mr. Waldheim. Please give a warm welcome to Mr. George Haddad. Mr. George Haddad, please come I tell you, if every Arab here was a George Haddad, we'd walk a long, long way. Uh, now, I want to give the floor to uh, Mrs. Helen Duckmer, and before I give her the floor, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Mrs. Helen Duckmer. The uh, American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee, we work very close with the San Antonio Forum for Middle East Peace. About two years ago, we had this idea about having a Middle East Peace Week in San Antonio. So we started approaching everybody and everybody in the city, in City Hall, and then we decided we should go to Mayor Henry Cisneros. When Mayor Henry Cisneros had a good gatekeeper, we could never see him. I saw him at a few banquets, uh, I met with him, I talked to him personally, but he would never give us a Middle East Peace Week. Well, I knew that Mrs. Dutzmer is in charge of international affairs here in San Antonio, and one time I saw her and I told her the story. She told me, Mohsen, put it in writing and send it to my office. And one week later, I was at City Hall and my wife and I received the proclamation of Middle East Peace Week in San Antonio. Mrs. Dutler, I cannot thank you enough. I don't know why, but Avarask. And 
I am so happy he's here tonight so that I can say a warm thank you so very, very much for this jewel. And incidentally, I'm a little partial because this jewel is located in my district. <laughs> but getting back to the discriminatory uh, question, we'll take, for instance, right here, the colonel sitting here. And I thought to myself, well, isn't that nice that a Mexican-American came and joined the Arabs this evening? <laughs> so that shows you, you cannot judge a person by their looks or anything that is a personal thing. And so, Colonel, I just made you a Mexican-American. <laughs> But getting right down to it, I never call anyone a Mexican-American, and they laugh at me. They call me discriminatory at times. And you know what's so funny? I couldn't possibly be discriminatory against a Mexican-American because I am part Mexican-American. <laughs> so I just laugh and check it off to everyday um, dumbness. There's no other words to say. I make copious notes when I am going to speak to something and then completely forget about it. So just forget about this and then I just say it like it is as far as I'm concerned. I always refer to the person first as an American. In your case, it would be Americans of Arab descent. And I go to your country if I'm ever lucky enough. And some of our people have criticized Albert Bustamante for taking all these trips. I applaud him. He's going to see what makes people tick so that we can all live together in one harmonious country. And that is a plus to me, not a minus. For it's through misunderstanding and not knowing the cultures of the people with whom you come into contact every day that the discrimination arises. You are no more responsible for some terrorist over across seas than I am of some terrorist here in the United States. And so therefore, I do not think that you should be judged by the acts of others. I have always said, I will take responsibility for everything that Helen Duckmer does and says, but I will not for one minute take any flack from something that someone else does. And that's the way I live my life. That's the way I hope that you will live your life and I just welcome every one of you with open arms. If you need me, you know where I am. City Hall, San Antonio, Texas. Thank you. Mrs. Dutmer, thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Arabs, we are known for our romanticism, are known for our music, love, and our poetry. And I have a surprise tonight for all of you here. We have one of the finest poets in the United States of America, Miss Naomi Shihab Nye. Mrs. Nye, she wrote a poem for us tonight. Mrs. Nye, would you like to please come to the podium? Please recognize Mrs. Naomi Shihab Nye. translated Abul Qasim's Shabi writing from Arabic to English last year. Welcome, Mr. Mahmoud. I am deeply honored to be here tonight. I thank Senator Abul Rizik for his inspiring words last night. I truly enjoyed that lecture, and I know many other people did as well. And I thank Mohsen for all his work organizing this lovely evening. I will end with a special poem I will read uh, one other one first. 
This is one called My Father and the Fig Tree. My father is from the West Bank, and there's a character in this poem who many of you may recognize, Joha. For other fruits, my father was indifferent. He'd point at the cherry trees and say, see those? I wish they were figs. In the evenings, he sat by our beds, weaving folk tales like vivid little scarves. They always involved a fig tree. Even when it didn't fit, he'd stick it in. Once Joha was walking down the road and he saw a fig tree. Or he tied his camel to a fig tree and went to sleep. Or later when they caught and arrested him, his pockets were full of figs. At age six, I ate a dried fig and shrugged. That's not what I'm talking about, he said. I'm talking about a fig straight from the earth, gift of Allah, on a branch so heavy it touches the ground. I'm talking about picking the largest, fattest, sweetest fig in the world and putting it in my mouth. Here he'd stop and close his eyes. Years passed, we lived in many houses, none had fig trees. We had lima beans, zucchini, parsley, beets. Plant one, my mother said, but my father never he tended garden half-heartedly, forgot to water, let the okra get too big. What a dreamer he is. Look how many things he starts and doesn't finish. The last time he moved, I had a phone call, my father in Arabic, chanting a song I'd never heard. What's that? I said. Wait till you see. He took me out to the new yard. There, in the middle of Dallas, Texas, a tree with the largest, fattest, sweetest figs in the world. It's a fig tree song, he said, plucking his fruits like ripe tokens, emblems, assurance of a world that was always his own. village. She still lives in the West Bank in a village called Sinjil near Nablus. And this is called the Garden of Abu Mahmud. He had also been in Spain. So we stood under a glossy loquat tree telling of madres y milagros with clumsy tongues. It seemed strange in the mouth of this Arab, but no more so than everything. Across his valley, the military settlement gleamed white. He said, that's where the guns live, as simply as saying, it needs sun, a plant needs sun. He stooped to unsheathe an eggplant from its nest of leaves, purple shining globe, and pressed it on me. I said, no, I don't want to take things before they are ripe, but it was started already. Handfuls of marble-sized peaches, hard green mishmish, and the delicate lilt of beans. Each pocket swelled while he breathed mint leaves, bit the jagged edge. He said every morning found him here. Before the water boiled on the flame, he came out to this garden, dug hands into earth saying, I know you, and earth crumbled rich layers, and this result of their knowing, a hillside in which no inch went unsung. His enormous onions held light, and the trees so weighted with fruit he tied the branches up, and he called it querido corazón, all the words of any language connecting to the deep place of darkness and seed. He called it yahabibi in Arabic, my darling tomato, and it called him governor, king, and some days he wore no shoes. And my poem that I wrote for this evening When I was a child, people didn't talk about Arab Americans so much. I knew we were different, and I was always looking for people who were a little like us, but I was also very interested in the French Canadians and the Italians on my block, and I just loved that mix. But one thing that I remember people saying to us when we were in grade school, they always commented on our olive skin, and I was very proud of it. 
And I love all colors of skin, so I've never even said anything about skin before, but this is called Olive Skin, Olive Bones, and it's for you tonight. Sometimes pride pounds inside him like another heart. Regarding a plate of grape leaves at a wedding, deftly rolled into thin cigars, he photographs them. A sweet river of tears tints his sight. As if that pride held him up, and sometimes in the presence of people who speak with the same lilt, it rises. And he feels it for more than one country, indiscriminate, some might say. But the fragrance of toasting sesame buns in Damascus, or the Cairo bus packed with school children offering seats, strike him the same way. He feels his grandfather's eyes in the eyes of all old men. And the trouble he's had crossing borders, even reading newspapers, leaves him then. Yes, he feels pain, he grows angry, but it's pride that fills his closets and rooms. His truth seems too simple. Boys who grew up with stones should own the stones. A woman with enough patience to embroider dresses certainly won't give up overnight. He waits a long time to be called right. Sometimes he thinks everyone must have a similar pride for somewhere. On those days, he understands shamrocks. He can dance the polka or order enchiladas correctly. He feels united with pride on earth. It makes him want to share. Olive skin, olive bones, you are welcome in his home. our young chapter has been quite active in the city of San Antonio and through our activities we got to uh, work with uh, WOAI radio for instance we also have a TV show the Middle East Monitor which I hope some of you are familiar with it's on Paragon Cable TV which I host and uh, we also have been working very closely with the San Antonio Farm for Middle East Peace. And we would like to recognize those people tonight because they have been a lot of help to the Arab American community. WOAI has opened a window for the Arabs to the American community. Every guest we have had, we always ask WOAI for some time. Carl Wigglesworth never said no. As a matter of fact, now every once in a while, he wants to know whether we have any Arabs coming to town or not. <laughs> and uh, before we give uh, a black to WOAI, I want to tell you a story that has happened with WOAI radio. Uh, Dr. Bill Rogers was working with an organization out of Boston and uh, we were supposed to receive a doctor from the West Bank, from the Mukassad Hospital. And supposedly this medical doctor spoke English. Well, that night we were waiting at the airport until about maybe one o'clock in the morning and the doctor didn't show up. Well, we rushed back home, we called Boston, woke everybody up, what happened? Where is the doctor? I said, well, sorry, the doctor didn't make it, but we're sending you an engineer. He's also from the West Bank. So we said, fine, what time do we go get him? They said, tomorrow at 10 o'clock. No, it was 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock in the morning, and the show was supposed to be at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, I get off work, I rush to the airport, get our guest with Dr. Rogers, leave him with Dr. Rogers, and I went back to work. Well, while we were there, Dr. Rogers and myself, we were, I was speaking Arabic to the man, and he was answering me in Arabic, so, you know, there was no English, very little English, you know. And uh, Dr. Rogers told him, you're going to be at, on the radio at 1 o'clock. And the man looks at him and he said, me on the radio? He said, yes, you're going to be on the radio. You're going to be on WOAI. He said, but I don't speak English. <laughs> when Dr. Rogers, he called me at work and he said, Mawson, sorry, your guest does not speak English. I said, what? <laughs> well, I called Carl Wigglesworth. I said, Carl, guess what? And this, ladies and gentlemen, there was like maybe half an hour before the guy had to come on, on the radio. And 
I told him, well, Carl, my guest does not speak, speak English. And he said, what? And I said, he does not speak English. He said, well, I'll tell you what. Why don't we have him live in Arabic? And I said, what? He said, yes, in Arabic, but I want you there to translate. <laughs> well, I ran over there, and we did a good show, and we were very successful. W-O-A-I. <laughs> W-O-A-I, the Arab community in San Antonio want to thank you very, very much. Please, George, would you accept this on behalf of Carl Wigglesworth and W-O-A-I? Carl Wigglesworth regrets not being here tonight. I'm glad he isn't, so I could be here. I am. Uh, of Lebanese descent. But he sends his greetings and he's, he's honored to receive this award. Thanks you, uh, he thanks you for your support and he's glad to, to lend the ADC an ear and a mouthpiece. Um, I accept this award on his behalf. Thank you. just come on TV like that, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, it's very, very hard to get a, a slot on TV. We used to have a lady here in San Antonio by the name of Jean Maynard. Well, her and I used to sit down together in beds and see how we can get the word out in San Antonio. She said, Mawson, you know what? I know a lady that's on TV. And I said, well, who is that? She said, I know Terralita Maverick. And I said, well, what can Terralita do for us? She said, well, we probably could ask her and maybe she can have us on the show, or maybe she can have our guests on the show. Well, we approached Terralita, and guess what? Not even two or three months later, we wound up with a TV show. Paragon Cable TV has provided the Arab community a forum here in San Antonio. Throughout the Middle East Monitor, we have been able to broadcast some documentaries on Palestine, we also have broadcasted some documentaries on Lebanon. We also have broadcasted some documentaries on Kuwait. And we are in the process of broadcasting a documentary on Saudi Arabia. We have also had different guests on this show. And lately, we've turned to some entertainment. We have a couple of dancers on, and we have a singer. And Baradon Cable TV, Mr. Byron Trott, we would like to thank you very, very much for your efforts. Please, would you please step in and receive a clap? I practically introduced everybody except my boss. <laughs> well, we'll keep him for later, that's all right. Uh, <laughs> this award is very, very special for me. The people that we're going to give this award to are very special. They have a special place in my heart. And I promised Bill Rogers and Gene Maynard, if Palestine, inshallah, will ever get liberated, we would name a street after both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a town, Dr. Rogers. Uh, San Antonio Forum for Middle East Peace, ladies and gentlemen, was started about three years ago through the efforts of Dr. Bill Rogers, myself, Dr. Thane Wah, Jean Maynard, who is not here with us tonight, unfortunately, we would love to have had her. She worked very hard on behalf of this community, on our community, the Arab American community. 
I'm gonna call the names of the San Antonio Farm for Middle East Peace, and would you please step out here and be recognized with your spouses, Dr. and Mrs. Thane Wall. Dr. and Mrs. Leonard Murphy.